Welcome to Photo Plus. We're going to look at how we can restore damaged photographs. Usually photographs that have been scanned in, so traditionally they only exist in printed form, and they may have scratches, blemishes, dust marks, or stains on them. So this image has been scanned in, and we can see a number of various rips, tears, stains, and other marks that we can either reduce the effect of or get rid of entirely. So when we're dealing with very prominent marks, such as this little tear here, one of the most useful tools to use is the clone tool located here. So we'll go ahead and select it, and for optimal results, we'll want to go into the brush dialog by clicking here, and changing the hardness to zero. This will ensure the smoothest looking result when we're cloning over areas. So the next step is to increase the brush size. Now I can do this on the context toolbar here, or I can use the shortcut keys to gradually increase or decrease the brush size. So I'm going to zoom in a bit further to work in more detail. I'm going to set a decent brush size, but not too big. Then what we want to do is find an area we wish to clone from. So for example, over here, hold down the Alt key, click once, and we've now defined the area we want to clone from. So if we just click drag over an affected area, we'll begin to clone over it. So what we want to do is find similar areas to clone over this rip with. Now these will typically be located close by. So we can just work our way down the tear like so. Cloning over it with surrounding areas. If we have a result that we're not particularly happy with, we can simply go to the edit menu and undo the most recent operation. And then we can pick another area to clone from to achieve a better result. And we'll do this all the way to the bottom of the tear. So when we zoom out, we'll see we've gotten rid of the tear entirely. We can then do the same for this tear over here. Uh, once again, we might choose to work with a smaller brush size this time. We'll choose areas located around the tear. Once again, I have a result I'm not happy with, so we'll go and undo that operation, like so, and then have another go at it. Again, we'll find sometimes the repetition of a certain area becomes quite obvious. As we can see here, we've got this pattern repeated three times, and we're starting to see a pattern here as well. So we might want to try increasing our brush size and start cloning from different areas just to break up that repetition slightly. Okay, so we've now gotten rid of our two main obvious rips. We'll turn our attention to the sky because we have what may be some kind of coffee mug stain here. So with the areas that are more or less pure white, we can just use the clone tool to go over these areas like so. Reduce the brush size and just paint out the more obvious staining. Again, decrease the brush size significantly and just paint over these affected areas. Again, this perhaps looks a bit too round, so we'll go ahead and undo the operation and then try once again, affecting a smaller area. 
and some areas we might not achieve a very good effect if we simply clone over them. They may end up losing their shape and would perhaps look a bit obvious. For these areas we can look at tools that achieve some more subtle results. So if we have a look at the retouch tools here, we can select the dodge tool. And this basically allows you to gradually lighten up either the shadows, midtones or highlights. So we have the midtones selected by default. Let's just see what happens if we click drag over this area. We'll begin to see we've lightened it up like so. And we can also try with these areas. Also important to note, if we go back into the brush dialog up here, we can choose to take the hardness down to zero. And once again, this just helps us achieve a smoother effect. So we can really just brighten up some of these darker areas in the clouds. And this just helps to remove that obvious staining. Okay, so if we zoom out, we'll see some various stains here. So let's zoom back into those. Now these are a bit more obvious, so they require once again the more brute force approach of the clone tool. So we can easily remove that one without too much trouble. Um, again, we've got a tiny bit of discoloration here. So this would be a job for the dodge tool. You can see some other various spots around here that we can get rid of. And further down, we have some more marks, this time in the blue area of the sky. So again, we can choose the clone tool for these, which gives us a better result. Okay, so far so good. We've just got some more marks to take care of. Up in the top right corner here, we have some obvious marks that we can get rid of. Once again, using the clone tool. Again, I can undo an operation if I'm not happy with the result. So we'll just quickly get rid of these areas. This is a, a quite a dark stain as well. So we can go over that using the clone tool and just a tiny bit up here to get rid of. And then we've got some stains down here as well. So we could use the clone tool for this. We can also investigate the power of the scratch remover tool here. So if I go ahead and select it and once again go into my brush dialog and bring the hardness down, this then works much the same way as the clone tool. So I alt click to define a source area to heal from and then I simply click drag over the area I want to heal. Now you'll notice it applies more of a restorative effect. So rather than just simply copy over the pixels, it attempts to blend them. So I can go ahead and do the same for this mark here. And you'll notice the result is much softer. So depending on the kind of result you want to achieve, you can either use the clone tool, which is a much more absolute replacement, or you can use the scratch remover tool, which will attempt to blend the final result. So finally then, we can see these white streaks over certain areas. Now these are going to be very, very difficult to remove entirely whilst maintaining a good looking result. What we can do, however, is lessen the effect they have on the image. So if we go ahead and select the burn tool here as opposed to the dodge tool, and we take the exposure down to a small value such as eight or nine, we can then very subtly paint over these lighter areas. And this just helps them blend a bit better into the overall image. Uh, we have some more white streaks down here that we can experiment with too. So we just click drag to darken them. 
So we can take the exposure down even further so that we're barely altering the tone of this area. And we should see that this is a good compromise as opposed to trying to remove the streaks entirely because then we would be severely compromising the texture of the image. We can also do the same in the other corner down here. We'll pick a larger brush size and just gradually work over the area. Okay, so that's all for this video. Hopefully this has given you a few ideas about how to retouch your damaged photographs, especially if they're old photographs and you've had to scan them in and you're looking to digitally improve them. If you have any questions or queries, please feel free to ask on the official Community Plus forums. Thank you for watching.